welcome. Um, the only thing on the agenda today is we're going to go through red line version of the report so that everybody can make comments to that. And, um, and hopefully we'll get closer to a, a final report is the goal. Um, we won't be voting on anything unless we, uh, we get a core up here um, during the meeting. Otherwise, this will be just work session. A, a what session? A work session. A work session. Thank you. Good way to describe it. Um, so, I'm pulling this up. There are no minutes from the last meeting. But, no well, minutes. we didn't meet, right? Yeah, we did not. We did not meet. Were the minutes from the meeting prior? Uh, there are meetings, minutes, meetings from the minute prior, but because of the funeral, I didn't get them typed okay, up. Okay, no, that's fine. I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. Just trying to. No, you're you're good. You're really good. <laughs> just trying to keep to the agenda. Sorry. <laughs> I actually like you to move over here. And be the chair. Uh, I'm sorry. I can't get the internet to work, so I can't look at the report days. So, in the interest of time, would you would you just start off with, and while I fool with this? Sure. Um, we did circulate um, and um, a draft, and I don't think I have what reflects your addition, which was one paragraph. Right. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, and um, so I had made a number of more or less editor editorial kind of you know, decision or, or recommendations um, that I think had largely been accepted. Um, to this, so it was. Just, I think they were all accepted yeah. with, with one comment. Right. Yeah, that we need to discuss with right. John actually. Right. Um, and then uh, Margaret had done also some uh, comments that she thought would strengthen the result. Um, yes. So um, those are also um, uh, noted in the version that I have. Uh, but I don't know that I printed out the version that included your paragraph. Your, let's dispose of that first, maybe. Where was your paragraph included, if I remember right? Page three. Yeah. Three and four. Um, the introductory observation. <laughs> so, you want to read it? And if you, maybe that would be helpful. Sure. Or we can, um, what I suggested was that we add that the Commission also recognizes that some of our recommendations may affect the terms and conditions of employment of Metro employees represented by employee organizations. The Commission strongly recommends that any assessment or implementation of those recommendations should be undertaken with input from and negotiation with the appropriate employee organizations in accordance with Chapter 3.56 of the Metro Court of, Code of Ordinances. And my feeling there was, since I'm a representative of organized labor, is that we, we should recognize uh, that those organizations should have a, an opportunity. A contractual to right under, under changes that are with the parties with which you negotiate. This is why. Uh, that was, I'm, I'm, I was sorry, I was doing that on the fly in my head, so I was trying to figure out if we're, if it, we don't negotiate anything, I mean, because we're, we're an advisory body completely. But, but any recommendations, any action on any recommendations should be subject to that, I think yes. is, is essentially what what the, the intent of that is, right? The mayor's going to undertake any any of the recommendations that we should get, they should get input from the organization. Right, right. And, and yeah, and if it requires a change in, in a contractual issue, that it has to be negotiated, right? Does that, have, John, does this word negotiation or have, or that paragraph present any issues or concerns with the way in which we normally, or does it contradict the no. way in which we no. normally? I mean, it, it, some of the changes would require studying, formulating committee recommendation first, and then the, when the benefit board considers it, the unions would be consulted and... Yeah, the, the process would yeah, would go. follow. Mm -hmm. right. And okay. I tried to track what what the ordinance says in terms of negotiation. Sure, sure. Anybody have any issue with in including that? 
I do not. Okay. That's Charlie right. Town. Thank you. Mutual agreement, since we're not voting on anything. <laughs> um, so, how do we want to proceed here, though? Because I mean, I made a number of ticky-tacky kinds of kinds of recommendations here. You then had yours that were that were in addition. That we can get to in a second, but but we just want to go ahead and I mean, as every everybody here has had a chance to read what was in the in the document up to that point, right? Is everybody a chance to read? Yeah. Anybody have any further edits or additions or anything that you want to make them in, in that document before we get to what John had as his? Is no, his? yours were your comments. Um, uh, Brad's comment <clears throat> was substantive. Yours were largely editorial right. tone. Right. Right. Um, that's yes. Uh, those, Sorry, that's what I those did. types of things. So, and I have some more of those that I'll get Margaret to incorporate. Okay. Okay. The right. Non-substantive. Okay. And then a few questions as we go through that are substantive. And then, and pursuant to the last meeting, what I did was I took, um, and and as Margaret suggested, I took the the grid data. Um, so th these were things that weren't came from the public, came from the department heads, but didn't have a ma really material or substantive effect and wouldn't really get us to $20 million or needed more study or things like that. I put those at the end, and the formatting is a little strange, but that's because of the word document. And when I, you know, I can move into this publisher program a little better. So are you saying you move each of the tables into to the, the back? Uh, to an appendix. Um, so there's three appendices. One um, is the, the submissions uh, from the public. Um, another is the, the grid that we all use for the field work. And then the third is the aggregation of public comments, field work comments into uh, a table. So it's more of a, you know, a resource for future, but doesn't isn't included in the narrative. <coughs> so I did have a question about sort of in the ordinance. It talks about us making recommendations, not recommended or neutral, and I wasn't sure when I was looking at all that list whether we were expected to on those, or since it's in the appendix, I guess it's... That was my, that was the thought from the meeting. Of, I stuck it in the appendix, so it would be easy, easier to work with the narrative. But um, we, we can go through those and, um, and discuss which ones should be recommended. We can't take a vote today, so we can just look at, you know, what we might want to put a star or a check next to for a vote. Um, and then the... Um, and then the, the rest is the substantive, the really substantive part is in the narrative. Um, and I assume we should probably go through all those to make sure that no one's, that, that we, if we need to put a check mark by those. So um, I've got it on my phone. <coughs> can't get the internet to work on my computer. I did something really terrible to my internet and I can't get my Wi Fi on the airplane either. <laughs> terrible. Um, so the do you, Dave, should we just go through the? Sure. I mean, there, there, are those are their comments. Margaret had made some comments so that we maybe we ought to go through page by page to work okay. through those because those are different than just the editorial or formatting things that were done. Um, so on page five, Margaret talks at the at the. Uh, under the revenue enhancement section, about uh -huh. restore use of budgeted savings to budget ordinance. Um, Margaret's suggestion was that we needed to check with finance to see if this was current practice. We have done budgeted savings the past two years. I anticipate that it will be in next year, maybe as a result of this recommendation. But I, I think that that is a concept that has been embraced. Okay. It's been more of a, a mid-year process previously, and, and my impression was that we were looking toward making it a beginning of the year process. That's right, yeah. To be accounted for as the budget is put yeah, together. so, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't see a, a, any sort of a legal or regulatory difference. In, yeah, in it doesn't. Yeah, all you're doing instead, all we're trying to do here with the budget of savings is instead of having the near mid-year discussion, you're, you're putting it up front and realizing it at yes. the time of the budget. Right. So. so then under section 
B, as noted, recover costs associated with safety and sanitation in tourism areas from MCC. Maybe, John, it's better to, since you're, that's a page, you have a couple yeah. of page five. Yeah. Well, on, yeah, everything's paginated a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, in the recover costs from the MCC, there were a couple of additional points. Um, police, fire, public works, I wondered if we should include MTA as a source of cost recovery um, and particularly the downtown circulator. As a source of cost recovery or as a target? Well, as a, as a beneficiary. cost recovery, that, that as a yeah, beneficiary, beneficiary that, that okay. you could add. There are probably yeah, other groups that could be added as well. I mean, historically, lots of things um, such as the Frist and the arts program um, were um, historic zoning were also in cover to cost recovery. But the, the reason particularly to put in the MTA is um, the MCC had committed uh, two million initially and then three million for the next 10 years to the transit plan, which is very gracious of them to acknowledge that um, they would contribute to that. Ultimately, it was 50, I think a little over $50 million over 10 years. So in terms of cost recovery or cost allocation with the circulator being so downtown centric and going to the MCC, it seemed like it would be conceivably uh, taking, taking them up on their offer. Okay. Uh, Do we know the cost of the circulator? We don't, but that would be... <laughs> Uh, but we do know there's a substantial capital cost also right, with sure. the circulator right. for that. But in terms of, and that comes to the, the next um, comment on that, is just to ask finance to do an annual accounting of the costs that might be reimbursable. Right, right. Uh, and at which point, I think, um, you know, you'd ask the MTA to see is the circulator, and is that less or more than two to three million dollars? And then perhaps that might might qualify. Can you ask for in this budget for what it, how much it is? I mean, are you have you all I think it's largely the federal figure? funded. It is. I think so. Okay. But um, yeah, MTA's finance guy could tell could you come that. up with that. But again, that just seems since that was already formally part of the transit plan, it's right. clearly approved and offered that that would be. Uh, uh, less stressful way of getting reimbursed. We wouldn't be able to supplant federal funds, right? I mean, I think the right. issue is probably around that. But if there's some... Yeah, there, local, there may be a local local portion that goes right. to that. So that was, that, that was my first of these. Sure. Uh, the first two items of the suggestion here. Um, is to go ahead and again um, see if that number could be conceivably increased beyond the current MOU based on the commitment that was made to the plan. I'll get that answer. Okay. Is your, is the, your is the cost of it, John? Uh, both the cost and the source of funding. One of the notes that I that, that in the in the red line version, the commission and the second line that section is commission recommends that the finance department undertakes an accurate and ongoing assessment of these costs. So that oh, good. covers yeah, very good. that covers what your Quorum. We now have a quorum. There you go. Okay. Yeah. I dressed up for this meeting. Yeah, well, that's why we, we, that's why we invited the cameras. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll stay right here. <laughs> <laughs> My one day off. <laughs> um, Dave is lead, leading us through the report, form of report that was sent, um, the, the version that was sent Red by Margaret version. at 159 yesterday afternoon. Um, so we're going through the, the, we're going through the substantive changes. It's the same, I think, as the one that was uh, circulated just, last week. That's the one I read. So okay. now, did you make yes. more changes? No. No. Okay. We're, the, we're, that's what we're going through now. The only additional change was we've added a, a paragraph that Brad had suggested to put on notice that any changes that affect any of the contractual obligations with the organized labor must be addressed through, through the normal process, right, or okay. through, right. through negotiation. And then um, we, we were, uh, the only other change to that, we were, we were discussing whether to include the uh, downtown circulator costs and what would, could be uh, essentially recovered from the MCC. Okay. Um, uh, John says that those are 
could be largely federal in nature, uh, but there may be a local supplement that could be um, could, it could be used because you can't you wouldn't want to supplant federal funding. Okay. And but we ought to understand how long that federal funding lasts. Is it a, in perpetuity? Is it a grant that disappears and? Two years or, or something, right? Well, or they may want to be expanding the circulator. At right. which point, you right. could use those funds to because the, deep, the to tourism do development that. zone goes all the way out west end, and it does it goes to the gulch. I think is as far out as it goes. The circulator, isn't that right? And it goes out to TSU that way. That's one, but yes. uh, uh, two two different lines. Right? Okay. All right, Patrick. What's your sense on the funding? Um, from what I know, it's it's going to be largely supplemented by the city. Um, so that was something that, um, if you remember, uh, under the previous mayor, uh, when we went to the free uh, fares on the circulator, uh, that cost was absorbed, uh, from my knowledge, by the city itself. So that's a cost that so, certainly be. Yep. Okay. Okay. And we can get that from MTA. There's a comment on the ten million dollar figure. Right. The, where where did the ten million come from that the the, the uh, oh, you, uh, convention you center authority could uh, sub come, or was it a uh, that's based on the prior contributions, the okay. intergovernmental agreement last year. <clears throat> Was that the amount, Ms. Kent, was it? Uh, it it was. That was for several years. Okay. And then this year there was a, or for the next fiscal year, another $10 million that the Convention Center Authority approved. Okay. An additional $10 million? Uh, yes, over and above the, the previous $10 million allocation. The previous $10 million allocation was over a series of years. Previous year. Yeah, well, oh, last year it was, it was the current fiscal year and maybe two previous. Oh, okay. Okay. And then, yeah, and then I think the Convention Center Authority approved another $10 million for next fiscal year. But it's not a recurring amount. It's a non-recurring, what do you say, catch-up? What was the... Uh... Um, my memory. John, I have an even better memory, is that in the MOU last year, there was a one-time payment of $10 million, which in a negotiated way was thought to represent possibly several years of an effort at cost recovery mm -hmm. right. and a commitment in the out years for a much smaller number than 10, but oh, a commitment. Oh, so three. That's what I would write. Three or three, five. Two to three. Yeah, it was two and a half. Yeah, two and a half. And so to call for making the 10 annual would be a material change okay. in ex an expectation, I believe. And make it recurring was. rather than a non-recurring, so they could be used for recurring expenditures. I mean, you need to be able to, yeah. you need to balance that up. But John would be much more familiar with the language of the original MOU, and I understand yeah, the, there's a second MOU. There is a second one that has that $10 million, and it is not recurring. If I remember, and is it one did. one time ten million, or is it ten million spread over three years? It's one time ten million for next for fiscal, next fiscal year. FY twenty. Yeah. Okay. Right. So sure. the MOU would have to be renegotiated to make that a recurring. Correct. To ask for a recurring um, amount. Do you want to add language about recurring, or because um, because if we get to the if we get to the point that we made in the report that um, we're, we're just sort of bridging this space between um, assessments and prior decisions not to raise taxes, but we're trying to get to that point where you can do the, that back to that four-year cycle. Right. Is right. it necessary for it to be recurring, or is it just something that's going to be there? Or is it, or should they be bearing some of the burden for the, the I cost? just have a... a, 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 a Long-standing, um, <laughs> you do. Um, yes, uh, for a good reason. Yeah. Um, preference for recurring dollars over non-recurring dollars, but you, they spend the same, right? Um, but you just have to have the. Um, um, but it, it, if for something that you know is going to be a recurring cost, such as police, fire, whatever it is, right? It would be nice to be able to to uh, uh, make sure that that's recurring, uh, uh, so that you can. 
plan your four-year budget. Okay. Right? Because otherwise, you're going to have to try and figure that out next year in the 2020 budget, right? Uh, no, maybe we're 21. 21 budget um, to uh, where you're going to get that $10 million from. So, but I would think for it to be recurring, that would be an encumbrance on the convention center authority that probably would require a little bit of study and review by right. Metro Legal. So maybe that's a language added to say something the effect of... Uh, both understanding the costs, because we do have the pair of the line there. Once the finance department has constructed the budget tools to track these costs over time, we'd recommend working with the CCA on an agreement to more permanently address this issue. That really kind of covers that. Um, but uh, but it uh, would maybe be, add the word recurring on yeah, a recurring or basis. On a recurring basis. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Got that. Sorry, my past sins can always haunt me. No, I, I uh, totally, I'm actually completely in agreement with that. And the commitment on the transit funding was a recurring multi year commitment. Okay. So okay. it's not, not an it, it, not Well, possible. it's certainly been addressed, um, and there is a precedent. Yeah. Okay. Well, the source of funds are recurring, unlike a lot of non recurring, because it's a recurring tax uh, collection. Um, I think the issue, an issue might develop if there's a big contraction or a major growth slowdown in those tourism taxes, right. and, and, and they have their obligations. And they, they have, have their obligations, first, right. right? So it should be. That would be part of the that would be part of the MOU, this, right? right would be to, to allow for that eventuality. Okay. Right, though there is such a surplus and such growth forecast in those taxes, a study would be. Think, mm -hmm. reveal um, possibly some opportunity there. Okay. So you had a next one on the CVC about uh, the 27 million. Well, I did. Um, the CVC was before council recently, and I asked this exact question, and they said the number was 27 million. Instead of 10. Instead of yeah. 10. Um, you caught that, I think, last meeting, and I did not change it in Margaret's version. Right. That was okay. an oversight on my side. So we'll change that to 27. My heavens, that number has gone. So it's gone from 5.5 million to, in this case, 27. 27, 27 yeah. Million. And I'm just, I, I, they were kind enough to repeat it. So I'm, I'm pretty okay. sure um, that it's 27 million. Okay. okay. Um, and I'll check that five million because that should be that probably is actually ten. Well, um, I'm not sure it is. You're not okay. Um, I've not gone back to 2007, but um, I can I can check it. Yeah, um, that's no. I, I think that may have been the base. I mean, it was a very different. Uh, the hotel tax was just a different world. No, it back really then. was. Yeah, it was a different world. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next. Um, we have the language about just asking whether or not the, the single entity ought to be the one that, uh, just to examine that and whether that should be, if, if there's a ter determination that it's not, um, you know, what should be done about it, right? Request, because it requires a state law change. If there's any, any alteration to that, right? Yeah, because it's said the state law is, uh, the two cents for tourism promotion, which has been interpreted heretofore to mean a contract with the third party entity for dedicated to that task. There are places in the state that do it themselves internally, um, and there are there's certainly other ways to promote besides just the CBC, I'm sure. But, but, um, well, it's just, it, it's a, it was, again, it's, as we look to what we've become as a city, right? That we're different. Yeah. It's like the hotel tax is different. We're, mm -hmm. we're in a different place. Yeah. Well, although the authorization of the incoming money might be the same, you still have the ability to reimburse from that pocket city costs you know, for the CVC actually to, to possibly ask them to undertake some reimbursement for the downtown tourism space, similar to the same set of questions for the MCC. Mm -hmm. um, and that, um, uh, that 
do they have to do that now? I, I, well, that, that excellent question. That's a separate question um, that um, equally any study but on state authorization of funding coming in, is there some state requirement that prevents reimbursables on the other end? That would be a question for John. I know yeah. it, it depends on what is tourism promotion and how you interpret right. that. I mean, the, you know, right now the CBC gets all of it by contract, and that right. was a competitively bid. And, right. and they, I think they've right. always been only the one, the only one to bid on that contract every year. Yeah. But I think it's so an annual rebid. It's no, five, five years. years. Five years. Five years so yeah. it's up in the at the end of the next fiscal year. Okay. Um, so you so Metro would begin the procurement process late in FY twenty. Mm -hmm. um, so a study or some sort of analysis of, of what we could do under state law and whether that contract should be written in such a way that some of that, you know, instead of instead of two cents, two pennies, it's one penny or it's a penny and a half and then the rest goes to the general fund or uh, for other We're promotion the, purposes. Yes, uh, or if in some way it's, um, um, you get more reimbursables, the better the tax collection is. You know, that that if the tax collection comes up here, then there's more that qualifies to be reimbursable back to the city for general costs than that's um, uh, As you explained, I realized that probably due to state law, you would have a hard time capping their collections, mm -hmm. right, if they're getting a third of all the hotel taxes. Mm -hmm. But it might be that in the contract you could say, you're getting this money, but if it exceeds this target, then please bear a larger share of the cost of operating uh, our tourist experience downtown. So at a certain point, then perhaps um, the, uh, we, we pay some cost for the frist and we give a negligible but charitable contribution to the symphony out of the general fund. At some point, then say cultural institutions downtown that now have a general fund cost could be shared for them by this increase in hotel taxes. And so for the NFL draft, for example, which is largely being quarterbacked by the CVC, you would think... Was that a pun intended, a, intended pun? No, no, it wasn't. Quarterback. That was, <laughs> I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, they would, in that instance, what you're thinking is <clears throat> that they would share <clears throat> in the costs associated with the public works costs, the uh, police, fire, if, those, those if, if the possible. intensification. There. If possible. Because, you know, it's so happy. It's such success. But if you get their share going up to $27 million, I'm sure no one anticipated it being $27 million a few years ago, to study in the new contract whether it's permissible by mm -hmm. the various laws that if that $27 million goes to $35 million, then then the city kind of gets a dividend back in payments of recovering the costs that we either we're putting up or investments in local institutions that in some cases are being carried by the general fund or MDHA. Mm -hmm. And for example, in the case of um, Frist, you know, mm -hmm. uh, MDHA has had to spend $500,000 on a new air conditioning system. I mean, the, right now, the state law says that two cents has to be used for tourism promotion. Okay. So yeah, but, the, but it could, but if, so if you're, I'm using the NFL as an example again, the NFL draft. Certainly, certainly some of that. So the it, be. CVC's putting that on, they're doing, you know, all of the incentives associated with it, the hotel room, all of that, um, out of that $27 million. But as a cost of doing that business, they could also absorb some of the Something other costs. Yeah. We have other sources of funding. I think, John, you just see. Yes, they have members. Yeah, the, they do. Uh, okay, so but I'd say that's like 75, I think 75% of their revenue comes from, from tax. the Metro okay. contract. It is overwhelmingly tax revenue. Okay. But part of that would be, yeah, I'm grateful to John, um, to maybe pre identify what tourist promotion costs are that would be right. conceivably Certainly. reimbursable. Now, the growth in hotel taxes might not take us to the place where we're getting a reimbursement, but if you pre-identify that and you knew what we were paying for out of another pocket, then
in, I think you'd have a considerably easier time beginning to establish that, the right? right? And yeah, it's yeah. all, a, and depending on the use, I mean, I think everyone would agree that Symphony and the Frist are marvelous things, and they're looking, I mean, the, the ability, again, to move the tourists. The people who come to the town for that. Mm -hmm. purpose, yes, right. for that. All right, so I've made a note to add language to the CBC portion asking for a study to examine what is permissible under law and the costs, and also a study to look at the costs associated with that those tourism promotion dollars that uh, that may be reimbursable under current law. Is that fair? Yeah, and that's not going to change anything for FY 2020, but right. this is just one of these long-term right. um but well, the um, because the contract is up at the end of 2020, 16, 17, there needs to be no 2021, 2021. Sorry, the end of 2021. There, the work the work will have to begin at the end of, of 2020, most likely. So I think it still stands as a a short term activity okay. because it would come into this fiscal year. Well, you also may. Um so tourism promotion, is that defined in the code? Or I don't it think it's not it in the state it's law. not in state law. Okay. And so, I mean, it's... So if, you, if there are concerns about what it means, wouldn't you need to know for purposes of next General Assembly session? If you need, if there was an effort to amend that, yeah, that would also you need to put know. it in the short term right. bucket, too. And is tourism promotion different than tourist related, you know, as a term of art? Um, I don't think see it any of them used. Is defined. I think it's been pretty broadly interpreted yeah. at this okay. level, just to be honest. Should we move on to D, David? Yep. Uh, Short-term rentals and recovering costs. Like the, the comment that Margaret had was, is the recommendation to take the Barnes Fund allocation for all um, short, uh, hotel tax, uh, occupancy tax derived from the STRs. Option one would only take council approval. Option two would take a change to state law, which dictates the reimbursement of the hotel occupancy tax. Recommends cost of forcing short-term rentals be recovered through the allocation of the of the hotel occupancy taxes for all short-term rentals. Um, so the, this is some background. I don't know if y'all have gotten into this or not, but the the council voted last term when we passed the original short-term rental regulations that the two per two cents that goes to Metro for the general fund, that the portion derived from short-term rentals be dedicated for the Barnes Fund for affordable housing. Okay. So that money In comes total. out automatically or at least gets, you know, diverted to the Barnes Fund. And so that, that was an ordinance that put that in place. That could be changed by the council. But if but any other yeah. kind of earmark or whatever would require state. You didn't mind just walking over that process again. Um, grateful. Um, so it's a hotel tax, which is authorized by the state. How did Metro Council allocate some of the hotel tax? Because two cents of it goes to... The Metro General Fund. Well, one. Well, maybe it's, it's one, one, one cent. It's one, okay, one sorry, one cent. So we're taking our one our cent. Our one cent from the short term rental. Putting it to the Barnes yes, Fund. Sorry. Okay, so we are, we are allocating our one percent. So yeah. we collected on the one percent of hotel taxes about $12.5 million this last year. So you're saying the portion of that $12.5 million that was collected from Airbnbs, which would be about a tenth of that, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know what the. Um, that that ends up in the Barnes Fund. Right. So the city general fund gets the 1% minus the Airbnb collection. Correct. Okay. So the city ends up with approximately $10 million out of hotel taxes. And, and meanwhile, for short-term rentals, the fire department, which has the to inspect general. the costs associated with the fire department inspecting and the codes department enforcing and the codes department issuing permits is not covered. Although there is, there will be legislation filed with the budget that will allow, a fee. allow the, the raise that fee Just to 300, 300 or whatever. Okay, um, so we'll have more fee income 
is there was there a cost recovery study yes, done with that? Yes, it was. Does that cover all? Do you know? Does it, it covers. I mean, they threw everything they could. I mean, even some of the Metro Legal stuff was all was, put um, in there. Put in there. Yeah. Okay. So I guess given that we have a number of recommendations related to tourism, do we want to take that out and yeah. leave the fee? I don't want to hurt the Barnes Fund. That's for sure. We would not want to take the money that's currently going right. to the Barnes Fund. Is what would be my that's my personal opinion. I have no authority, but it's my opinion. Okay. Um, which is her question as to whether the if we thought maybe there was more allocation that could occur, but obviously that's not. Well, there's um, there's um. So you there's can still take more than ten million, well, I guess, the residual right. ten million right. that is there, and put it in the Barnes Fund. Aren't we talking about the separate inspection fee? Yes, that's right. A separate right. fee is a better from the hotel approach. tax. Correct. That this is then you have total control to have the to appropriate inspection fee to cover the costs, in, including of codes. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's um, what the new three hundred and something is to right. cover. So it's it's a increasing an additional fee to appropriately recover the cost. Right, and so my question is, do we want to take the the language about through the allocation of hotel occupancy taxes out? Uh, do we want to take the whole recommendation out if the fee is sufficient? Well, we want to support the fee, right? Yeah, so the so the commission recommends or the so cost commission supports period. the recommendation made by finance and fire to increase the permit fee from fifty to three hundred thirteen dollars to support enforcement and inspection. Okay. Uh, I would suggest taking out the through the allocation of hotel occupancy. Correct. Just okay. take that phrase out and the, put a period after recovered. Yep. All right. Uh, yeah. and, uh, are you, I mean, is your concern that it, you just want to make sure that we don't say things that mess with the Barnes Fund? Because right now the allocation of hotel taxes from short-term rentals, at least the part that we can control under state law, goes to Barnes. Okay. So do you want to say something like we that we appreciate the fact that money does go to the Barnes Fund, or is it you feel comfortable enough just taking that language out and you're protecting it? I think we can just take it out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask you one other question. So the is the three hundred dollar in here? Mm -hmm. Yes. There, it is yes. Last last okay. set. Section. So is that the number that we're gonna get? Or we don't know yet, right? That is the number that will be presented to the council to approve. That Three hundred thirteen dollars is the right number. That okay. was in the finance department's suggestions in their budget submission that came to us. Okay, and that was based on that comprehensive study that they that was okay. done. Well, council could increase it. I understand. We just do. Can we well, I don't think council can not increase it. It has to be because cost recovery based. Okay. And so what the study has said is. This is what you can charge to cover your, you know, entire wraparound costs. But you for couldn't that. just unilaterally raise it to five hundred dollars. Yeah, because then it's a tax, would, yeah. and you don't have that authority. And this yeah. really budget is so slow. I'm grateful for this. This really started last June, and last year's budget to ask for the study to be right. done mm -hmm. to increase the fee for this year's, or or to study what the full cost recovery yes. would be. All right. So for purposes of this, because we we don't have. That ordinance raising that to 313 hasn't been filed yet. No, it won't be filed till May 1st. But you're comfortable with an, us putting a number in here? I think so because the finance department submitted that right. as their recommendation for the budget that they created. Okay. All right. Okay. As long as they're okay with it. Well, I, <laughs> are there other agencies that incur similar costs? I mean, does this does this in any way acknowledge the police department enforcement issues that? I, I don't know. I, I didn't see that study, but it was supposed to include everything enforcement related. Now, I, the, the police do respond to noise violations and things like that for short-term rentals, so I don't know. I, I just don't know. I haven't seen the study. Okay. But I was told that it's very comprehensive. Okay. Um, for the grid that's next, I think the most efficient thing would be for everyone to look at that and pipe up if there's something that should be removed rather than to go through each. So the default would be it's recommended, but, um, but we uh, we can remove anything that is no, I, I, I had a <clears throat> suggestion before we get to the grid. And, that, and the grid is going to be moved to the back as okay. an appendix for readability. And just the, the increases 
general category of revenue enhancements, and this is for a discussion here, is that um, the um, study or the finance department explored two other mechanisms, which is the payment in lieu of property taxes from authorities. To what degree that's possible, not possible, what does that look like? Um, and then um, intergovernmental service charges equally to the authorities for the recovery of um, costs downtown, and whether either of those mechanisms are um, effective, so to speak. So when you can we uh, when you say intergovernmental services um, chargebacks, you know we have internal, low cap, we have low, low cap internal service fees for. Enterprise HR, they, they, yeah, we charge the water department yeah. for all of those things. Are you you thinking of beyond that? Because that should does that cover legal now? Uh, no, we now do not. You got you have your own budget item line right. on it, right? right. Well, well, part of this is um, being bureaucratic about it. That if you are requesting reimbursement from any authority, right? So just take the Music City Center. Right, and it's restricted by state law about what it can pay or reimburse. Does the restriction include charges in effect? Charges like payment in lieu of taxes. I mean, NES is not taxable itself; it's fairly exclusive, and yet it is agreed to a payment in lieu of taxes. And or is the service charge mechanism, where in the Music City Center, just making this up is then presented with an intergovernmental charge that police overtime is, in fact, an operating cost charge that is eligible for reimbursement. So partly, it's trying to find the magic words for what is a request that fits the reimbursable expense category and what is, in fact, an operating expense if somebody thought to kind of write it up and bill it. Right. Now, I, this is a deep question, which I'm, I was always grateful to John and all the many fine legal minds, um, just for study, okay. you know, that, that are we failing to ask the right so, question about so what's For example, right? one thing that we have looked at okay. this past year is whether um, the airport authority would be obligated to make pilot payments, okay. and we determined that they are not. Okay. Um, NES does. Um, What's the difference? Yeah. It has something to do with, and I, Margaret did all the research on this, but it has something to do with um, some of the federal regulations, and I. I can see the funding that they get would be restrict, could be restricted. Same could be true for MCC in this case by the state law, right? That, that they are just restricted in terms of, even if even if even if it's dressed up. In a, in a different terminology, they're restricted from spending those funds for certain purposes. Well, and famously, the water department, if it were an authority, such as in Louisville, would make a pilot payment. In well, they do property. make they it do for, the for the stadium. They do make it for the stadium, but this would be. They could make it more. That three point two million is small. Twenty years old. Y yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, which is another. Um, aspect of, again, are we collecting fully from a, a potential tax base? So what you're proposing is an additional reg recommendation that would um, request a study of s state law, permissibility under state and local law for, uh, and, and what? And bond and bond, and bond federal. federal. Uh, and federal, federal state um, bond the bond permissibility bond. of a pilot charge, pilot, pilot. assessment against other, other pilot agents. and low cap charges, right. in effect, uh, for uh, governmental entities currently not making those payments. Um, now, it may be that everybody comes back and, again, I. The airport authority not making those payments or making those payments in a insufficient amount commensurate okay. with the footprint, right? Commensurate with the footprint, and clearly this is work that people are already undertaking, right? To have thought through the 
the legality of the airport authority, but then if you went through the rest of the government and answered that question, and it may be in time for next year's committee to say, well, the border department to go up from three and a half million from 20 years ago, this is what's required, this is what we could request. I mean, they would need plenty of time to know about right, it, but yeah. is that a long-term well, additional funding source? Well, and the water source? department might have to raise rates, too, in order to accommodate it. Um, right. Okay, so so your suggested recommendation is that Metro Legal and Finance undertake uh, the appropriate studies to determine uh, whether additional pilot and low additional agencies should be charged for pilot or low cap commensurate with right. state law. Any governmental or authority or agency okay. might be um, um, able to make an additional okay. reimbursement to the general fund either through pilots or inter okay. intergovernmental service charge agreements. Does anyone have any version to that or no I think it's no? yeah I think it's a great idea well um, thank you I think also it's very in keeping with this committee that it's a long-term study item to do it right is it fair this doesn't mean we're going to do it but mm -hmm. you know <coughs> the question probably needs to be raised and it really cannot be raised in the second week of June no, no, no. Right. Yeah. You know, it needs to be raised 18 months yeah. before you give them 48 hours to answer, John. Right. Like no problem. <laughs> well, and that's kind of the theme that's been running through all of our discussions here is, you know, the, the slash and dash approach is just, just doesn't work in government anymore. You really have to think about these things. Not that we don't, but, but it, from this commission's perspective, we've got to think about it more in advance. Okay, so are we, can we go on to the grid now? John? Yeah, uh, yeah, yes. Okay. So if if I could just ask if anyone has it sees anything on it that should be removed. Well, okay, so what's our our charge was to say yes, maybe no, right? Mm -hmm. I mean in terms of the uh, 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 or further study required. Right. So instead um, instead of going through the all the yeses going through each one. Right. I thought I would be a little bit more efficient about it and say, okay, <laughs> what on there is a no? What on there okay. is, is a, we just well, don't do now that. In the suggestions in the box, I, I did have two maybe additional box suggestions. Okay. Um, I am ready. In the other suggestions? Um, the source of the... Well, one is to establish a res revenue estimate for each action that Metro takes, which may do, I mean, it's unclear to me to what degree we do that. We certainly establish a, in the council, a cost effect of every action. But sometimes we don't, we don't, I mean, and this is, this is more of a discussion question. Are, are we also adding a kind of a revenue value for actions that we take? Well, the only, under the charter, the only body that can determine revenue estimates is... Okay the Metro Finance Department. We can submit these suggestions and ask them to put a number next to it. Okay. And it may be something that's done already, and it's... Some of these are. Some of some, because you have to run the government that way, but to formally do that. And then my other suggestion, which is a little bit more formal, is just to encourage the procurement staff to have negotiation training and encourage price savings negotiations on invitation to bid contracts. So where price is the only determination, then that those negotiations um, take place and that the procurement staff have negotiation training. Well, nego but so uh, the vast majority of procurement is sealed bid type procurement. So where you open the envelope, um, you want to buy some Fleet's a good example. Mm -hmm. of that, probably right? lowest price wins. Lowest price wins. That's when my c former career was money, the cost of money. But um, the things that are negotiated are typically um, you put an RFQ out for some yeah. things that are hard to quantify. Yeah. You know, or or where professional expertise or something is of some importance. So could we narrow? Quant qualify that? Oh, okay, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm, I'm having. You have different sources. And it may be nothing more than to encourage the 
professional procurement staff to have updated training, you know, as procurement departments around the country, I think, have different strategies for getting uh, lower cost for things, and just to make sure that we are, have a best practices. Maybe that's the the best language that we should can have is just to make sure that Metro procurement is following a national best practices standard. It's a, it's a recommendation. It's a recommendation. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with saying that in there. Well, my fear was that you know if we were recommending negotiating training for you know like open the envelope type procurements, that that would probably upset. Well, but even even if it's an open the envelope type thing, um, once you open the envelope, do you have any ability to negotiate after that? Right. Of course you should. I, I, I don't know. I don't do that kind of work. Okay. Um, I mean, so, I mean, we're familiar with the process where you open up the envelope, you look at it, and then, you know, you may still have some questions and you work through it. That's... If it's more than you want to pay, you can cancel the... Solicitation. Right. So there's always, to me, there was always, <coughs> even after you open the you There's always a best stop. interest at the yeah. state level. There was always a best interest of the state you can negotiate uh, as long as it was downward, right? Um, uh, but uh, but I don't know if that. If I assume the same the applies, but I, I, I but just do don't we, know. But do we have that? So. But aren't there also, like when you're developing an RFP, or you have questions that come in about what's included, what's not? I don't know if that would be included in that kind of training to help. Negotiate with the do you do best in finals. I honestly don't because know. another way to do it is a best in final where you have you, you receive two or three bids that are you know often these things are fairly close right I mean in terms of the price and their meeting qualifications that are set out in the RFP uh, but then you pull them back in and say all right give me your best and final offer and that way you winnow out if you will, you know, kind of down to the to a better price. Mm -hmm. That may again more apply to our well, our procurement goods procurement. Goods procurement is hard to hard to, to to do a lot with. So it's based on this state law. So our the state procurement act is essentially what our procurement code is. So well, it's been changed and upgraded well, since I was there. They they made several additions that were good additions for things yeah, like. Negotiations, best and final, being able to not have to have the T's and C's, the terms and conditions that are punitive and that drive bidders away, um, uh, you know, for full open liability, for example, is kind of the one that seems to keep people out. That's well, John, could we could we follow the theme and other recommendations and and simply say that the finance department undertake a study of the procurement practices to establish, promote uh, best practices, right. something like that, yeah. rather than narrowing it down to negotiation. No, I think that's uh, exactly right. And hearing Dave talk about state practices just to make sure that we're following all that good yes. stuff. I mean, the state's established a centralized procurement office that has now taken on, has now been in place for eight, nine <laughs> years. Um, and has good has a lot of good practices, right? So maybe it's in some ways it's just making sure that we've taken advantage of what's available um, in terms of their um, their capabilities too, but because they they've done a lot of work on this. Okay. And the answer may be yes, but the answer is certainly that they are doing it. But let's just make you know make sure. Right. Okay. Uh, I've, I've kept kind of quiet over here oh. because I'm a non-voting person, but uh, in this regard, I think there is a need to take a look at nonprofits and the funds that go to nonprofits. A lot of those are done by contract, by fee for service. There's the uh, you know, community grant process. But there are some that are being renewed annually uh, that are non-competitive, and uh, I'm not I'm not speaking negatively. And there's a lot of good work that's done by nonprofits, but there is a large amount of metro funds that go to nonprofits, and some of that occurs uh, without. Um, and I, I don't don't take this the wrong way, but. Once it has started, uh, it's almost seen as an entitlement, expectation. Mm -hmm. as an expectation by the nonprofit, and and the um, uh, 
indication that, well, this is our lifeblood, you know, this right. funds from Metro. And over the years, uh, you know, some of those are probably not the most efficient way to to procure services. And, you know, and I just, I don't think anybody has a real handle on how much money goes to nonprofits through the different departments and through different mechanisms. Would that be a separate recommendation, or would that be included in this best practices for procurement? I think that's a separate deal because that's a different process than a procurement process. Yeah, and I almost thought maybe that's something that should be yeah. in the next report. That right. It may be too late in the game for this report, but it, but it's something that does need to be looked at. Was that basically a second paragraph yeah. addressing nonprofits? Right. That in that same, under the same procurement? Right. Okay. Kind of best practice. So we asked the finance department to do a study to, to just to help us understand what's going on with nonprofit uh, grants, procurements, uh, contracting. Right. Because, okay. I mean, that's really what, what you're talking about. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. and there's, I mean, so there's a bunch of federal pass through that just that, that continues on that, that whether or not what the city's role is in that. I know the health department's always had a boatload of that, right? Yeah, and some of it is sub-grantees sub that, that uh, you know, a department's gotten a grant and, oh yeah, well we wrote this grant for this money to go to this agency when perhaps there are other agencies that, that should have been opened up to um, and opportunities given for others to... I mean, the part, the part that we always see is the part that's in the back of the budget where it's, you know, it's a specific direct allocations to not-for-profits or it's through that, that yeah that's the tip fund. of the iceberg okay, <laughs> that's, so what that's the part <laughs> we see that yeah San I think has said something very important that what we that that is the tip of the iceberg right, like, if right. that's the case that there's lots of yeah, lots of other channels uh, where Metro funds do go to nonprofits, and again a lot of them are doing great work at a, at a very fair price, but there may be some opportunities there for. But that's above and beyond that identified list. Oh in yes, the metro budget. Okay. Oh yes. You yes. know how you can because uh, we see it quite a bit in the sense of um, grant opportunities that are done every year, and it's the same grant opportunities, and you're trying to figure out why did they keep doing it the same way, and what happens is I, without knowing. It may be the same groups, which may do great work, get the same grants every year. But then again, it may be that every so often those grants should change up because the city changes around us. Well, so. competition does focus the mind on efficiency around right. it. You know, it's, a, it's always, even if you end up Can you make that up, that statement? What? Competition that refocuses the mind on what? Efficiency. <coughs> efficiency. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. Um, like Jonathan Swift put it, is nothing so focuses the mind as the prospect of hanging in a fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> Focuses the mind is one of my favorite phrases. <laughs> I think it's a separate recommendation, but yeah. you can do whatever you want. I mean, okay. I think yeah, I think it is a separate, separate recommendation. Okay. Yeah. Which we need to need to understand what what the process and practice is, because you don't you're, you're obviously not seeing it in the budget. We just see we just see it sounds like the tip of the we see we don't see what's built in within departmental budgets where they right. can do this. Right. What we see are those direct ones, which are in the appropriation section in the back of the right. budget right. book. Okay. All right, so I'm okay. going to add to the text additional recommendation to review the allocation of resources to nonprofits um, at the departmental level, at the departmental level right. um, and then ask for further study um, by the by the finance department, the report to council, and then y'all can decide if you want a regular reporting mechanism that, um, as you, we have in the past. Okay. So, okay. All right. Done. Now, it, in terms of these um, recommendations, uh, other revenue suggestions, uh, is there anything on there that, and these all either came from the public or they came from the department heads? Um, or they were raised through field work. Is there anything that you all, um, we, we want to just erase or scratch off of there? Um, I made an assumption of, for the time being, I'm assuming that it, these are both legal and finance concurs. The report will go to them. Um, 
before the next meeting uh, so that they can they can add additional information on that. Um, but anything we want to delete? Well, some of them are required. Some of them will require ordinances, yes. Well, they're required definition. So, and, and, and I think we just announced yesterday a whole change in the way the parking system is going to work. If memory serves, there's a couple of them on that. Um, should we, um, we talked about this last time, should we then remove anything related to the parking fee since that is already under underway for the year? Well, okay, so I think the question is what do we do with these? Do we just leave, do we, do we, I mean, people made them. They, they're going to expect them to be in the report. Yeah, yeah. them to be mm -hmm. in the report. So is it just that we want to pick up those that we highlight? Uh, because we don't have time to do the analysis. This was one of our problems is we didn't have time to do an analysis of right. every single one of these to say this requires a statutory change, this requires an ordinance change, this is already being considered. I don't know how we we do that between now and that because we're already kind of past due on getting so that's this. I thought the idea of putting it in the appendix is kind of was part of your we thinking. We can do this. That's something we can do over time here yeah. once we get this initial report in. So maybe it's kind of we ask for a pass, if you will, so to speak, on, on uh, doing anything with well, these until we have a chance to. And maybe and just treat them as an appendix item that yeah. will be for the next item. report. Yeah. Well, or. Yeah, slight yeah. variation, which is to take these and ask finance to make a rough estimate of the financial implication of each of these items. Can we? Do, I think we need to sort them before we do that because I, 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 I think we, we're burdening finance and legal because we'll also need to ask legal for a review. So those that we think merit, and this is what I think the Atlanta group did, those that they thought merited legal and financial analysis they they sent for that mm -hmm. others they said here's a bunch of stuff right. um, we can't really figure out yeah. how much it's worth right well, so for purpose of this report right you have short-term stuff I got that and then you've got the longer term stuff if we haven't had a chance to truly vet that then put it in the appendix and um, and take it up for the next round. And the next round right. of this committee, you take it up and you start looking through them and saying, well, I mean, for example, on the parking thing, who knows? I'm not exactly sure yeah. what happens with that. I'm not either. If, if, if something happens or if nothing happens, you've still got the thing in. I think that's right. I mean, if this is what people submitted, it should stay in there. Right. And I, I th the purpose of the, of the grid, were the, yeah, these are things that we didn't talk a lot about. Um, they're fairly incremental in terms of, of revenue, um, but I but I want the public to know that we, we, we saw them. Mm -hmm. You know, put something on. You know, put uh, the front. Say, of, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the front will say. You know, yeah. we, we're commission is good, is going to continue to analyze all of the recommendations submitted, but in the interest of time to get in our report for the, this budget year, we were unable to accomplish. That. So what? Uh, I'll do that for all the grids. Yes. I'll clean up the language. Some of them are a little duplicative, and there's some typos in there, and I'll clean that up. We had had another conversation about including the source of the comment. One of the challenges I had with that is that in a number of cases, the recommendations were, there was overlap. So I would see a recommendation from both the public and from a department head, and and then from a department head submitted, and then the field work, and, and so forth. So. Um, I can tease those all out and say this was for the public, um, put them on duplicatively, so, you know, duplicates, like this is a recommendation from the department head, this is a recommendation from the public, or do what I did, which is just sort of aggregate them um, as a list, and, you know, you can assume that they came from <coughs> all those sources. I think, again, at this point, in the interest of time, we're supposed to get just put them just, together. Okay, all right. Well, let me we'd be able to track back where the source yes. is. Yes. Yeah, well, this can be part of what we do. Right. And, and so, it, because in the other appendix, you're going to have the actual public submissions. You'll be, see that, you'll be able to see that. Um, and then you'll have, um, uh, I actually have a grid from the department. So we can include those appendices and then my, our aggregated, more easy to read approach. 
Yeah. So, so a slight variation on this. Um, just thinking of the council's work ahead is some of these recommendations were also um, uh, recommended by the departments in their budget hearings. Mm -hmm. um, in in response, you know, everybody had a category of this is our budget blue ribbon committee response. So, for example, I see one here: uh, revenue increases, explore or the the service of civil processes. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's by the sheriff's office, right, yep. that that would be less expensive to do that. Um, certainly the sheriff's office, um, that, I think that was one of their recommendations. Right. If it has been made by a department, it would be, it only becomes useful to the council once there is a revenue Numbers number is, associated right. with it. That to encourage the departments to work with finance to identify the savings from their own recommendation, you know, to um, now it may be that you get not possible, you know, long term, but we're possible if a department has made a recommendation to the BRC that it also submit a revenue value, and then that allows the council in its hearings and in June to say, "Wow, the, this the department recommends it. Here it's the value." What's that? Perhaps yeah. this is a good idea. Let's act um, to take it sort of speak to the next level. Because to some degree, no, it sounds very worthy. I, I don't know if it is, but if the, and it may be that the police department says, great idea. We're overburdened. You know, it's very expensive for us to do this. Both sides say that's a great idea. Then what is that worth, so to speak, in budgetary savings in the short term? To go ahead, even though the value of this committee is going to be in the long term, to go ahead and try to take that to the next level right now, if okay. possible. All right. And it's also possible for the sheriff's office to say, we're a year away from knowing that number. Okay. You know, that's, well, that's a good well, answer. Let me, let me just follow up on that. Okay, so uh, for purposes of the report, could you put it together? For purposes of the budget, uh, and when the budget comes to us, we start having budget hearings. If we break it out by the departments that may be recommended it, and at least That's, bring it you're up. You're talking about doing that, right? Yeah. Uh, having a yeah. departmental grid. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 I'm going to have both. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, the, but the key, I think, will always be on those things is somebody needs to bring it up in front of the at the time of the budget. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, right. at some point. The chairman will have a report and send it out. And so in the back in the appendix on the departmental grid, I think you highlight that by going, it would be appreciated to have the department, since it's their own recommendation, right? Right. To also have a budgetary effect uh, number that they're willing to discuss when it gets to the council hearing. Okay. So sometime between today and mid-May to go ahead and and to somehow indicate that it's also appropriate for them to come back and say, that's a long-term objective. We can't do it by mid-May. Or in some cases, people will be able to say that the parking uh, 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 parks department fee increase could probably be done right now. Uh, you know, $2 more to play golf, what does that mean? Well, and, and I, what I'd like to do is probably quarter send that through Talia. Yes. Um, and uh, and have finance can weigh in on how they want to approach those estimates. Yeah, and, and that's fine. But I think the, the biggest issue f that I see is um, when we start going through these budget hearings, you know, for the three and a half weeks we do it, how do you interconnect the two things? Because, you know, when you get to the second week, you know, you've got all this stuff, people asking all these diverse questions. But if there's specific things, John, I'm, what I'm trying to do is figure out, okay, so how do you make sure that the appendix doesn't just get lost, you know, that if there's something specific we want to bring up, how do we make sure that it gets brought up and is appropriately addressed? So would someone send it to, send the, the report, we'll send the report to all the departments. We would, with an, a request letter from the vice mayor saying that, you know, when at budget hearing time, please come with your estimates and to the extent necessary work with finance to, to, to improve those estimates, but your estimates for any of the recommendations that you that you, you have made, that and, the, and that way they are on notice from you that you're expecting to see it, yeah. and it can come up, um, council member Vercher or whomever can can kind of real, can kind of uh, ride that to, uh, to make sure it gets done. 
Yeah, that's fine. I think what I'm, I guess, so typically at our budget meetings, we always have a specific set of questions that we ask yeah. at the beginning. One of them is, are you comfortable with the budget that's presented? Oh, gosh. And the answer oh, is You ever got always, a no? <laughs> the, nobody's ever, well, somebody once said no, but I don't know what happened to them. <laughs> okay, so the answer is always they yes. Didn't make it out of the building. <laughs> the answer is always yes. So the, you know, uh, what better, I want to do. This is, would be a better question. Than I that. want better questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're exactly right. All right, well, I will. All right, I will. I will. I will talk to Talia, and then I will circle back um, at the next meeting. We'll finalize that. All right. So, can we move on to cost avoidance if we're done with these revenue items? Yeah. Um, There's only one comment. Okay. Uh, was there a follow-up? This is on the centralized copier contracts and software purchases. Was there a follow-up with the purchasing agent on this suggestion? I don't think there was. Uh, at least not by this, anybody on this group. Um, pretty sure Metro has centralized contracts for all these. John, maybe we do. Well, the department had see, the, this came through the um, department head. Okay. So they seem some of them seem to think, and I'll look at which ones it was, but some of them seem to think that they do not. They have their own. There are out there independent hmm. contracts with R.J. Young. And yeah, and I think what Margaret is saying is they may some depart. There may be a another contract that they can use at a better price that Metro already has. Right. Oh, okay. So she's saying that she's you, saying you that maybe we may, should, we be may riding, have some. should be riding along with another contract potentially. Yeah, and I, I don't, I don't think she's making it because we don't know for sure whether those are, but those exist. But okay, All right, I'll clarify that. Um, okay. Um, so I think just for me on the overtime issue, that was one where when the FOP saw the issue of police overtime, that was obviously one of the things that led to me wanting to include. Additional language. And that, and, and so you know, that came, that recommendation came from the public and the white envelope suggestions. And it was a dominant theme. Um, so I, I don't know what what's up with that, but, um, but there's clearly some concern about it from the, from the public's perspective. It could be just the reporting that went on. Or, or something else. That's why I included. So, but we've 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 solved whatever problem with that. Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Any comments on the others? Grids to grid again. We've the grids to grid. Okay. Cost savings. Can I just make some brief <clears throat> observations on the cost savings section? Uh, and mainly in that section on return to centralization of internal op operations, I think we need to recognize that, at least for elected officials, uh, compelling them to um, perhaps do the performance budgeting and mm -hmm. to pull in HR and finance staff, I, I believe that's going to be a little bit more difficult, and John could probably help help with that, uh, that they have the uh, autonomy in, in many cases uh, that department heads would not have. And I think even in, in, when we talk about... Stan, you're talking about like constitutional officers and um, well, the sheriff for one. They've got they've got 900 employees, and, right. and that's a pretty good chunk of metro. There's, uh, you know, the assessor's office, some others that are elected uh, in, in that case. But uh, is that a statutory or yeah, restriction, so or is that a cultural statutory? Okay, in constitution, <coughs> I mean the the elected officials do have great autonomy, especially specifically as it relates to employment matters. Okay. So uh, even, uh, you know, there, there probably are some opportunities uh, for HR and, and finance staff to be centralized, but I think it needs to be handled in a very thoughtful okay. manner and, and to do a wholesale, pull in all the HR and finance staff 
you would have chaos like you would not believe. <laughs> well, we need to consider the statutory restrictions that yeah. might exist on that. Yeah. I don't want to let them, you know, my thought is I wouldn't want to let them completely off the hook of not playing nice in the same big metro sandbox. Right. Um, <clears throat> But, you know, I guess the way it was worded, too, kind of sounded like, well, it used to be centralized. Now, over time, they've they've set up their own HR and That's finance. not true. That is not true. Yeah. I, you know, I can tell you that when Metro began 50 years ago, the health department had HR staff, the health department had finance staff. The Board of Health is the civil service board yeah. for, That's the, reason. for uh, the health department. And... Um, while there may be some opportunities for cost savings uh, by, by doing that, I think it needs to be done very thoughtfully and carefully. Um, and um, the that function and role of HR is, is, the, is the question. And to me, a bigger question from my uh, career in, in Metro government was the lack of position control. Uh, Can you explain that more? Steve? Yeah. Um, if you go to the HR department and ask how many firemen there are, policemen are in different categories, they can't tell you. And most HR um, software packages have a position control module. Most budgeting software packages have a position control module. But uh, HR has, it, it has not been interested in pursuing that, and finance is building that. But it's not built yet. But to me, I think the interest of this group in position control would go uh, much further on efficiency and cost savings. So maybe the initial recommendation would be to have um, ask um, finance, as someone to do a study of the, to perform a study of the number of positions authorized and filled in metro government. Well, they are in process now in finance of implementing position control, but um, <clears throat> it has not been the case for the last 40 years. <laughs> and, um, and not that any, every, any dep every department uh, would try to play games with that, but some do. And um, I think there are some opportunities uh, with HR and finance staff that centralization could help, but there will always be a need for some HR and finance staff out in the departments or it will be a very inefficient system. So that, and that, <coughs> that recommendation came from uh, the public, from uh, actually Metro, Metro employees in a couple of cases, who were citing the hiring of HR, FTEs, in, a de in departments instead of, you know, frontline mm -hmm. type thing. That, that's where that came from. Well, I can tell you the size of HR would triple, <laughs> or at least triple if you pulled <laughs> pulled many from from the departments because there's, you know, so, frank, frankly, there's more HR work going on in the, the work departments yeah. than there is. So your recommendation would be to revise that to focus more on position control position control and take a look at what is the role that the administration wants HR to perform. Uh, you know, they, they, they've been more about recruiting and training, but not so much about all the other Managing. broad, broad yeah. things that um, HR could or could come under the HR umbrella. And I'm not, you know, pretending to say what I think that should I know be. Nothing about HR. <clears throat> okay. Any questions about changing that up? Just some rewording of this, I think, could, could okay. help. That, that, um, I can do that. Yeah, that, I, no, it, was, it came up like two or three times, and I thought, well, mm -hmm. I, include it. I don't know very much about HR, so. Um, okay, I'll rework that one. Others? I just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Brad. Up behind. Just on the OPEB, back on the cost oh. avoidance on the OPEB liability reduction, that's really just focusing on implementing something that's already been adopted, because I know we were kind of limited in what we could do around benefits, mm -hmm. and particularly things that were covered by benefit board. 
This was in the finance department's um, submission, um, and uh, so I, in I included it. Uh, and yeah, it had already cleared the benefit board, and that's the only reason it's in theirs because it was included in their their submission. Yeah, so that's not a new program. That's just hey, it's out there, and utilize it. Um, let's see, uh, Dave. I think we have a. Is there a comment on? Uh, work mobility program. Uh, there was one on the transfer of civil enforcement. Yeah, that's the okay. civil enforcement. Enforcement was requiring a charter amendment. I asked the question. Margaret said it would. Okay. Um, and uh, redefining the sheriff's duties um, to uh, include that, and also then I guess it was somebody maybe it was in one of the grid recommendations about uh, using sheriffs. Uh, deputies yeah. to do traffic uh, enforcement as a, uh, minor accidents, I guess. Correct. I'm sorry. That, that would right? require a charter amendment, that too, would yeah. yeah, Probably, yes. Okay. So the Sounds language like should talking be to the pol police union, that was another one where it's the devil is in the details yeah. and that traffic enforcement is not usually just segmented into a traffic enforcement right. issue that then can become something that would might require an arrest or police right. authority. So. Right. If, if, if it's an accident, somebody's obviously drunk, then they're going to be a law enforcement yes. officer. It's not going to be as cleanly right. separated as Is this a study, case. study it, and then consider a charter um, amendment? Council could consider a charter amendment depending on the study results? Sure. I mean, I, I know that I mean, <laughs> with all these things, you're going to take a look at them. They're just their recommendations. They're looking at it. That will be pushed back in different places where they'll be like, you can't do that because of this. So you just study it to see. And I'll, I'll confess on the next one, but I didn't understand what a work mobility program was necessarily. Say, this um, came from a department heads, um, and, and Nancy uh, work talked. Work from home. And Nancy talked about a little scheduling. bit where you have an employee who, um, you know, works. On the, lives in the north side of town mm -hmm. um, and is assigned their zone, for example, for inspections is the southwest side of Kent Town. Um, you know, but they come into the office, then they go out. They pick up a car, they go be, out. Yeah. Wouldn't it be easier if, if they yeah. just went to yeah. southwest? And then, yeah, work from home. I, apparently the state has mm -hmm. implemented they a... Have. And do you know anything about it, John? Yes, they've done, I want to say it's roughly 10% of their state employees now have um, some kind of a uh, flex schedule or work from home. I think the state system, you go into the office maybe two days a week, and it is great. They did it because of space, office, office space. Office space, right. And so you, you know, instead of everybody having an office, you have more of a shared space and, and they went to the low level cubes uh you know the the cubes without the big tall walls right I mean, some places i think yeah that you just go in and you just find a place yeah, to it's stay. a hoteling kind of thing is the way we yeah. call it that we do that extensively at our company i mean well i know that dhs i think does a lot of work from home because because they have people that their job is to go out mm -hmm. and, and this was and, this was nancy's point yeah, yeah go out and monitor or right. go check clients or right. whatever job isn't to be so in the office why are they supposed to be in the office right. their job is to be outside so and the, well, even if it's the cost of the call system. center work or if it's other work i mean you know we decentralize call centers like crazy like yeah. planning has also looked at that issue from a traffic management standpoint sure. the you know if you don't have people driving in centrally to an office and then going out, you're, you know, cutting down on congestion. Well, on parking. Intensively. Would are there any amendments to that recommendation? Any clarifications you think that are in order? Well, you just you were just trying to figure out exactly kind of what. Yeah, what they meant. Yeah. Um, the mowing and right of way. Uh, any questions about that? That's a. I know that's something that state departments of transportation have implemented, where they you become less dependent on grass and cutting grass um, and go to more native um, species. Yep. Yeah. What about concrete on 440? <laughs> oh boy! So I have a question. How come that that concrete border along 440 is you feel like you're right next to it? 
when you're driving along you the road. It's really really close. It is so close. It's really close. It's like, could they just move it over just a foot, just so you don't feel like if I make one wrong move, I'm going to hit it. Don't pay attention. Don't text I'm paying drive. attention. I'm not doing anything. But it feels like you're just right next to it. Um, should Can we you put that in the report? Um, you're you're at the state level. I know. I I go to the airport a lot, so I I, I travel that way. Um, okay. So now intermediate to long term. This this is a, a less pressing because we're just trying to frame up some long term objectives that we would pick up. Um, <coughs> is there any? Changes to that, John. Um, it, here it references um, go, kind of going back to a four-year pay plan. Yeah. And I confirmed that at least since 1984, we have never had four-year pay plans. Oh, the most we that we did years? was three. Three. Okay. Why is that? Forgive me for that. I don't know why. I just know that it's been. Um, I mean, I guess the thought is. Well, if you're just factoring in your projected tax growth after you do a, a a tax increase or whatever or a tax adjustment at the reappraisal year, I don't know if it's, it's just to too, make sure you have enough to, money for that fourth year. Right. It's too yeah. goofy to look out four yeah. years. Well, it's too goofy to look out three years. Three puts you on always on the wrong cycle. Right. You know? Right. What do you mean? In terms of the reassessment. In terms of the reassessment and where you are and that, then it shows up two years early or then three, you know, the, the, the three always in time. Well, the three, well, if you, if you did three, your fourth year, you'd be digging into the general fund if you wanted to do a, a pay increase. Right. So I think the, the way it used to be structured is you would have, let's say there was a tax increase. And so that first year you get more money than you need for the pay plan that year. Second, a little yes, and then by the third, right. it's... You're using it, you can yeah, use your non-recurring funds you can use in the first year that decrement the second year that yeah. it balances yeah, right. the third year, is it kind of the way that, yeah. Well, and the, and the recommendation isn't specific to the pay plan. The idea is to get just get back to, you know, that, that cycle, mm -hmm. uh, a, a predictable cycle that our employees can count on Right. Our council can count on. Well, our no, it's not system. the practice. It seems reasonable to me to do the four years. It seems reasonable to me, except that I, I can four years can be a long time in this world. Well, but the play plan, you're <coughs> projecting that it's stagnant, you're, you know. So under a pay plan, Brad, if the, in the, just to go back 10 years and relive my nightmares, um, I was part of that. I know you. Well, you were always one of my nightmares. Um, but um, when you have an event um, like we had, or, or a, 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 what happens to the pay plan? You're, you've got the pay plan. It's a contractual obligation, and it comes off the top before you <laughs> have to make any other changes to your expenditures. Is that how that that effectively that works? I think it was just revised. It was. It was. So it would be revised downward. You'd have to negotiate the revision downward, I assume. But if if you if there was a twenty percent drop in revenue, a catastrophic drop in revenue, um, and you just simply weren't going to have the money to fund the pay plan, is that then renegotiated at that point? Is that how it works? Or we, how we, had to, so we had to we had to pass the bill last year. We had to fix it. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, which was particularly awkward because okay. I'm sorry, the I'm just trying to understand how it operates. Because, because four the years would be worse, more risk, what? if you will. Yes, because of the misalignment, that the play plan was not matching the principal revenue. Right. So the, the council passed legislation um, asking or directing the Civil Service Commission not to propose any more multi year pay plans unless. Basically, the funding is guaranteed. Good. Well, that's crazy. No, I'm sorry. Um, that's you can't guarantee funding. We're taking it's taxes. I mean, say remember, sales taxes dropped in. I I understand. I'm, but the, right. but there was legislation asking them right, don't was, submit any more unless no, you that's, can. That's okay. But I mean, I think what uh, what happened book. was, I mean, again, a three-year pay plan, but the money was not there to do it. It wasn't set aside like 
That's what that happened to you this last year. Yeah, that's right. That's what happened. So what you're hearing is this. So you just didn't fund the, the, the increase, and the, that's why no employees did not get a raise this last time, because the simply right. the pay plan was there. It was negotiated, it you, but it was not funded. So the funding is predetermined for a four-year period of time, and then this three-year cycle, you know, comes in, and you don't you don't know what you're going to have, and then that gap is exceptionally I mean, the, painful. You know, there was a sure. the the revenue projections were not. I mean, there, we didn't get the level of revenue that we needed to fund that three-year pay plan. I mean, it just you know because of the reappraisal and some other factors. So is the council's is action binding? No, it was a memorializing resolution to the council, I'm pretty sure, I mean, to the commission. Because if you're trying to, you know, and I think one of the things that we, I certainly heard from, and you probably did in your field work, heard from employees, is that, you know, that lack of predictability, that just, you know, being at the whim of, you know, the sort of political, which is natural when you're working for a government, but, you know, there is a, some standard. Right, but I mean, the, the, you get into all kinds of different issues. But what was not in the e in the end, employees didn't get what they thought they were going to get. And so the question is, do you stick with a one year? Because you know your appropriation is for one year. You base everything on that one year, and that way you don't leave people hanging in year two if the revenues aren't there. But, but your revenue raising mechanism is a four year. Uh, Right. So, so uh, your idea or that idea was to try to match up when you're when you're setting your tax rate, for instance, and you're saying, okay, we're going to have a four-year play plan. You try to match them up yeah. on the front end instead of sort of saying we'll take it year by year. Right. We're a, when we raise property taxes, we're thinking about what our needs are for four years. We're not thinking about what our needs are for one year, even though we appropriate on a one-year basis. You know, we're projecting as far as we can into the future. And pay plan, well, the pay plan is the biggest part of that because that's what government is. It's, it's employees. Um, uh, so that, that's, what, that's what we talked about, and, but we can make any amendments to that that you, you might like. Yeah, it, is, it seems to be contrary to council's view of it. Well, but. I mean, you could change this into, say, study the, study the enactment of a four-year pay plan to match the revenue cycle in effect that we have. I like that because, I mean, at some point, I mean, you, you, we learn from what's happened. Um, so why not sit down with a group of people, take a look at a four-year pay plan, see if there's something that can be done to, when you're, if you're doing a four-year budget, how you can, if you do a four-year pay plan, how do you lock in right. to make sure the money is are there so we don't run into situations where you want to give people raises and you can't because the funds just simply are not there. Well, and how do you recruit and retain people unless you have some visibility in the out years of what their pay might be, famously um, hurting us? But. Um, this forces then the finance director, I mean, at the time of the reassessment, right, the finance director helps to set the new rate based on our expected costs. This formally makes the finance director then budget for the four years of the pay plan to validate then the rate. Or am I, is that basically right, John? Could, yes, I mean, I think the, the issue this last time when, with the, the three-year pay plan is that it was not tied to a, a tax increase year. So previously, I mean, you kind of had, and in, in, in this case, it was thought that the revenue would be there um, without a tax increase, just by growth. Right. But then because the, the rate that basically got set well, too low isn't the right word, but it, I mean, it was lower to not, that it didn't Below generate it, enough. Below anticipated costs. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, the rate was set, yeah, the rate was set, wasn't it, to um, essentially equalize the, the, yes. the rates from the uh, prior. Yeah, it has to be revenue by law. So by, yeah. by law, and was not increased um, to, uh, from that. Yeah. Which is what it, it, it just, it not only was it not revenue neutral, it actually went down below what 
and if you connect the pay plan and the costs associated with the pay plan and align those with your cycle of revenue raising, you are more likely to raise taxes or lower taxes, as the case may be, in a way that is will properly fund the needs for your of your employees. Um, rather than, yeah, this year by year, let's keep our fingers crossed and, and, and see how, how it goes. Are we in a three-year pay plan now? No. 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 Well, sorry, that's we, why I'm asking. We, we were in a three-year pay plan understand. in a while, right? Going back to Purcell's administration. Well, we had one. We had one in place last year. Yes. I understand, but one that went all through all three years. That actually got implemented. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, what suggestions on the on that recommendation? Study. Think you got to study it. Okay. All right. All right. As, a, as, as a, John says, is there hasn't been a practice of four years, so we wouldn't be returning to anything even right. if we passed. So, yeah, that language has got to change. Okay. Can, uh, do you want to retain the language of, of, of aligning it with property tax assessment? Studying aligning uh, studying, studying the alignment. Yeah, with a, with a view goal of aligning it? I think you study the whole thing okay. and figure out how it should all work together. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. And it may... Right, but again, it strikes me that three is just a weird number. It is kind of a weird number. Right. If it's not matching, mm -hmm. you know, then, then in no way correlates. And it ought to be two and two or something that, that, that fits the, <laughs> for the reappraisal cycle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then you'd know in the well, mid-year that you might have to, as a council person, you might have to raise well, the taxes. Reappraisal and rate setting cycle. Right. Well, the but I'm talking about pay plan could be two and two, and then would always fit the cycle is what I guess. So right. you at your midpoint, I don't know. Right. I'm just. I think you look at the whole thing. Yeah, you just look okay. at the thing. I think you come up with something yeah. that is practical, makes sense, yeah. and. I will rework. Uh, I'll rework that. Uh, the next item, cost recovery. I know we've been at this a while. Maybe we could just quickly wrap it up. But, um, there was a lot of discussion in, from departments and, and submissions of uh, in those grids of uh, of, um, of permit fee raising, and I thought I'd capture a lot of that into one long-term recommendation to make sure that we're we're studying and assessing cost recovery on an ongoing basis. And John actually, I think, has submitted a well. That's for the performance budgeting. But um, have you submitted anything about regular cost recovery? The, the, the mechanism by which that could be analyzed on a regular basis. Cost recovery. For, for permits, fees and fines, things like that. No. Okay. Um, <coughs> this, uh, this is basically a right. study recommendation. Yes. Okay. Any changes to that? Okay. And then, let's see, next to last, cost avoidance. Um, the, the use of performance audits, um, we had input from internal audit on there. The use of performance budgeting, that relates to the budget, I mean, the charter amendment that's uh, pending. Um, review of procurement practices, would you like What's me to... the charter amendment? Yeah, John. Well, uh, in this room, right after we He's adjourn, the <laughs> Charter Revision Commission is hearing an amendment. Um, uh, one of which is an, an amendment to require debt reporting and performance metrics to be regularly reported. And now, the performance metrics, in part based on your suggestion and Talia's suggestion, is really going to be very much at the discretion of the finance director, okay. working with each department as to yeah. what makes sense. But then once they're established, then to, then to go ahead and publicly report them and to make that a consistent thing. Um, under the recommendation of um, the council's attorney, if you're having all these amendments on the charter anyway, to go ahead and put that on the charter, and that way it can't be shaken or stopped or first electively no longer having that. Sure. That, and then that will help the finance director work with the departments a little bit better, like we have to do this, what are the three metrics? Right. And also, departments are exempted if the or reporting units are exempted should the finance director deem that it's really not constructive. In the small agencies like you were talking They're about. They're hard to measure and hard to evaluate. Right. And, um, okay. okay, cool. 
and we have a comment on the procurement practices. Do you want me to, de should we delete that in light of the addition to yeah. studying the, that we've, we've discussed in this meeting? Yes. Okay. You wouldn't disagree with that? I'll delete that and move it to what we discussed. Okay. And then. That's it. One more section, uh, cost just cost automation. savings, automation, and other. And I, I thought this was a really. This came from a department head, and I thought this was a really. And it was a. It was actually several department head submissions, um, where people made like. Um, there, for example, there's some redacting. There's such a thing as redacting software, um, but they're hand redacting affidavits um, at. Uh, at different, at, at some departments. So there's somebody who, which just is frightening when you think the mistakes that could get made. Well, in legal, we do have to do a lot of hand redacting hand on public so, records. So the, my, the, the, the what, what came from the department heads, um, it, it was, you know, if we make these investments, that's FTEs we can deploy to other uh, purposes. So I thought it was a neat suggestion. Any? Comments, additions, the long-term stuff you're not bound to. Yeah. Okay. And then the last thing is the conclusion. Did you write that, Dave? Uh, no, I think that? Margaret wrote that. Okay, excellent. Oh, yeah, she put in all the ordinances. So, yeah. So, um... And you can take off the junior on me. I am junior, but I don't... Know. You don't use it? <laughs> I don't use it. Yeah, my dad has been dead since 1970. So. Um... Okay, so what I guess next step, what I'll do is take all of these suggestions, I'll roll these into the near final report, we will circulate that. Do we want to meet next Friday to finalize it, or do we want to stick on the regular schedule? Um, Friday's good Friday, good Friday. Oh, it is good Friday. Okay. That would be good. It's also the... Uh, Draft. NFL draft. Yeah, that'd be fine. You do not want to be downtown next Friday for any reason. Okay. okay. It's, it's, the the draft the it's the following week. It's the following, it's the following, following week? Okay. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. John, do you not know? I don't keep up. I wasn't going to be there anyway. <laughs> <Next> Friday. <laughs> is the building open next Friday? It's good Friday. Uh, it is open on Good Friday. As far, well, now, the courts may right. do something different, but, but I mean, it's I, not I, a... I know you don't want to do it in two weeks from today. Right. Which is fair. So we do it. what about Thursday? On the 25th, Thursday. I am unfortunately yeah, out. I don't think you want to do that. That's the first day of the draft. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm talking about next Friday, the next Thursday, the, uh, the 18th. 18th. I yes. could do that. I, the following week, unfortunately, I'm out of town for the last part of the week, so I was going to have to change that anyway. We'll do it on the 18th. Can we do it on the 18th? Is there anyone? Mm -hmm. I, Ray, that's fine with me. Oh, okay. And Good Friday is not fine with me, but only can, Thursday can, is okay. Can we meet at 11 on Thursday the 18th? It's okay. All right, let's let's schedule that, um, and uh, I'll get that, I'll get with Danielle to have that noticed for the 18th. At 11? Uh, at 11, yeah. And, and this um, partial report is on the website now? It, uh, according to the email that I got, yes, um, but if not, I'll, I will... I will see to it that it that it gets put up there. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, I will the, with the red line and everything. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And then we'll circulate this version after these changes we've discussed um, before the meeting on Thursday, and then plan to vote at the meeting on Thursday for finalization. And, and will that be put up as well, or the the yes, I will the version that I circulate. I'll ask Danielle to put on the website. Okay. Thank you. All right. So okay. can we have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Right All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. That was Two a lot of Thanks for your everybody's patience. I mean, but it, it has to be a real emergency.